Good morning. Welcome to WHBC TV. Christ is risen. Is risen indeed. Happy Easter to you and yours. And I pray that the same power, that same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead will quicken you and your mother body today in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Oh, this is the day the Lord has made. And at Wilma this morning, what a celebration. Heaven came down and glory filled our soul as we celebrated our resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus this morning. In a little while, I'm going to invite you to come with me to the sanctuary. You might see a highlight of some of the things that we did today, including baptism. Yes, we had four candidates got baptized today. And we had also two utopian eunuchs baptism. They just walked up and got up from their seat and decided to get baptized this morning and be obedient to Christ's command. Wow, did heaven came down this morning as we rejoice in these people. And maybe you might see a little bit of the choir too as they sang that wonderful song, Is Risen. But this morning, the message that you'll be hearing is entitled, Empty Promises from the book of Matthew. Why don't you get a pen and a paper, take a listen, and then I'll come back and pray with you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Several people are here this morning to celebrate not only the risen Savior, but to celebrate the awesome work of God in their lives. Amen. To show the world, I said to show the world yes. that we still serve a risen Savior. The one that is well and alive, even in their hearts, and this morning. So you're going to be hearing some awesome testimony. Uh, please, don't, don't keep quiet for them. Uh, they need you to cheer them on. Uh, this, this is their home run, and uh, they need you. You may be seated. Good morning. My name is Pam Smith, and this is my testimony. Before I came to Christ and accepted him as my Lord and Savior, my life was beginning to feel like a runaway train. I was feeling empty with no direction. I was unemployed and really didn't appreciate all that I was already blessed with. One day about four weeks ago, I felt a calling to come to church. I knew that my friend Elliot went to church, so I asked him if I could join him. That particular Sunday, February 21st, during the sermon, Pastor Ty said that he knew he was speaking to somebody in particular, that someone really needed help. He invited anyone that wanted to come up to him for a blessing. I chose to come up and I went up to him that morning. I truly felt the Lord changing my life. Amen. When I first accepted Jesus as my savior on that Sunday, I didn't really understand what it meant to have a relationship with him. Hmm but I could see God's faithfulness in my life right away. Amen. Amen. Within a few days, I had a job interview lined up. Woo! I landed probably the best job I could ever have hoped for. Mm. I felt more joy in my life, mm. and now I truly see all the blessings around me in my life. I realize that this is just the beginning of my journey. But I believe that Jesus Christ is watching over me yes. and shaping me into a better person Amen. and more in line with the person that God would have me be. Yes. As Philippians 4, 6 to 8 says, tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Hmm. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Amen. Thank you all for being part of my journey. Church, the testimony of Pam that you just heard is a testimony of the power of God unto salvation. And when we welcome people into Wilma Heights, we don't know the journey that they've been. We don't know the struggle they go through. But I thank God that you people at Wilma Heights are loving, you're caring, and you're pilgrims together with people 
on this great journey. And so Pamela being baptized this morning is a testimony of your faithfulness as a church in keeping the doors open and keeping the name of Jesus Christ high and lifted up in this community. Aren't you glad that you're part of that? And it's so nice to see this young lady as she's growing in, in faith and in the radiance of Jesus. And we know that he will begin a good work in her. will bring it to a perfect completion. Amen. Pam, have you received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? I have. Is it your desire to be baptized this morning? It is. Therefore, upon your confession of your faith, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Father, we're so grateful to you, God, for this wonderful day. It is a day that you have made. It is a day that you have decreed in the life of Pam, Lord. We thank you for bringing her thus far. And we know by your grace and by your mercy, you will command your two sheepdogs, goodness and mercy, to continue to follow her for the rest of our days. Father, be with her, O oh God. Keep Satan under our feet and continue to give her victory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, and all God's people said, Amen. 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 Good morning, Wilmer. Being baptized, especially today, means a lot to me. Um, I'm doing something for myself that's not temporary, but forever. I grew up going to church on Sundays. However, Monday through Saturday, I was not living according to the word. I was quick to anger. I was looking for things in the wrong places and I was really just bringing myself down. Um, God blessed me with very prayerful family, friends, and this church. And I know that God answers prayers because I'm here today and he's forgiven me. God also blessed me with a wonderful husband who encourages me to strengthen my relationship with Christ, um, our Lord Jesus. Um, my husband and I are, are on this journey together. Um, I know that the Lord is our Savior, and I know that He's going to make the rest of our the rest of our lives the best of our lives. Amen. Thank you. It's such a blessing to see the Lord bringing uh, young couples to Wilma these days, as you've all seen and witnessed. And uh, Don is one of those, uh, including her husband who too will be baptized this morning. That's how awesome and mighty our God is. It's a household salvation. And this morning it's so good to again to see uh, this couple just loving God and growing faithfully in coming to the house of the Lord. And I know they will continue to want to be part of what God is doing in this house. Uh, not only did they request to be baptized, but that right away they've also requested to be a member here at Wellman Heights Baptist Church. That's how awesome God is. Amen. Amen. Okay. Don, have you received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes. Is it your desire to be baptized this morning? Yes. Therefore, upon the confession of your faith, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Glory! Amen. 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 We rejoice with you. Father, we're so grateful to you, God, for the life that you've given to Don. Thank you for her husband and their little boy. Thank you for your grace and your mercy that is with them. And Father, thank you for the new desire to want to serve you. And to want to go deeper into you, God. Father, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that you make that a living reality in their lives. That Holy Spirit, you give them a hunger and a thirst 
for more of you. Father, let the rest of their days be the best of their days. For we ask this in Jesus' most precious name. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 My name is Nii Oshunu. Myself and my wife came together today to dedicate our lives to Christ. Even though I was baptized a long time ago back home, but this day we came together to dedicate our lives, to walk in His ways, to do His will to the end of time. Amen. Amen. Brother Nee is the better half, no, the other half of beautiful wife Don. And again, I am so grateful to the Lord for this couple. We know that greater things is yet to follow them in the mighty name of Jesus. Can I encourage you to keep praying for them that God would enable them to make their home a pillar of faith for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Nehi, have you received the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes. Is it your desire to be baptized this morning? Yes. Therefore, upon the confession of your faith, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Hallelujah! <laughs> Glory! Amen. Father, I want to thank you so much for near you this morning Lord you are good and Father I pray that they will blossom where they've been planted oh God and Father God that your grace and your mercy will be sufficient for them that when they come into this house of worship and Father God they call upon you that you will hear from heaven and Father God you will heal them we bless you we honor you and we adore you would you make all crooked ways straight before him that you will continue to make him the head and not the tail. You give him above and you make him above and not beneath. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. My name is Elliot Pikulik. Good, good afternoon. Good morning. I'm a little nervous, sorry. <laughs> um, I was baptized as a Catholic. I was raised in a Christian home. I went to Catholic school. I became a Christian when I was 10 years old. I've had an amazing, very intimate relationship with my Lord and Savior for the past 24 years. I have been through a lot of ups and downs throughout my 34 years of age. When I strayed from the church, it wasn't good but I was always welcome when I came back. And you know, I've been here almost two years now and it's the most amazing church family I've ever been a part of. And I wanna say thank you. I love all of you, I love all of you so much. In obedience to the word, and my devotion to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I take this opportunity today to finally take that big step and show my Father how much I love Him. I, re I read off the top of my head, I will say a few scriptures that pertain to me. Isaiah 54, 17, No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Every tongue which rises against you in judgment, he shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is from him, saith the Lord. Isaiah 55, 11, So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. I shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper and for the thing to which I sent it. Jeremiah 29, 11, For I alone know the plans I have for you, plans to bring you prosperity and not disaster. Plans to bring about the future you hope for. Then you will call to me, you will come and pray to me, and I will answer you. You will seek me and you will find me because you will seek me with all your heart. Yes, I say you will find me and I will restore you to your land. I will gather you from every country and place that I have scattered you. And I will bring you back from the land in which I sent you away into exile. I, the Lord, have spoken. 
Ephesians chapter 6, I believe it's Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 17. Finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, and against the rulers of the darkness of this age, and against the spiritual hosts of wickedness in this heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand on the evil day, having done all to stand. Stand, therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate, breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. <sighs> Above all, taking the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all of the fiery darts of the wicked one, the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Philippians 4, 13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And finally, Philippians 4, 19, my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. I love you so much. Oh my goodness, this guy is a walking Bible. <laughs> Gee whiz, I'm a pastor, I can't quote Bible like that. It's a gift of the Lord. Oh, I love this brother. He's a son of the house. My own son in the Lord. And just to see the journey that he has gone through, the hearts, the aches and pain of the hearts, I didn't even think he was going to come this morning, even though he was there at the baptismal class. But that's the struggle. But we know Satan is a liar. I said we know the devil is a liar. And Jesus is still the Messiah. So I rejoice in the God of my salvation this morning. I truly rejoice this morning. I truly rejoice this morning for Elliot that is going all the way with Jesus and I know that he will begin a good work in you is able to bring it not to completion but to perfect completion in Jesus mighty name amen Elliot have you received the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior oh yeah is it your desire to be baptized this morning? Yes. Therefore, upon the confession of your faith, and I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Woo! Hallelujah! <laughs> you did it! You did it! You did it! Amen! You did it. Let me pray with you. Thank you, Jesus. Father, be thou be glorified, O oh God. May you continue to be glorified in Elliot's life. <laughs> Father, touch him, O oh God. Heal his deep wounds. And let him know truly that him whom the Son has set free will be free indeed. Free at last, O oh God. And free to serve you. I'm free to live for you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. You know that the power of God is still moving in this place. This young woman, we thought we had lost her in July. Grew up in a Christian home. And decided to join Islam. And she went in full force. She was even about to travel to the Middle East. Ah, the devil is a liar. And we went praying. We went fasting. And we went banging on the doors of the gates of hell. Asking Satan to take his dirty hands off. 
Elaine. August went. September went. She won't have anything to do with us. Her mom and dad were basket case. It was as though the devil went into their home. October, nothing happened. November, nothing happened. December, my wife and I were, we were in Africa. On a Wednesday night, the phone, came, the phone call came in. At 8 o'clock, it would have been your 2 o'clock here. And the news came that Elaine declared and renounced Islam. And said, Jesus! And said, Jesus! And said, Jesus! Is still Lord. See, sometimes life will take us out of this way, but only for us to know what the word of God says. And Jesus said, Whomever the Father has given unto me, no one. <laughs> no one will snatch them away from me. Elaine, you want to say something? I just want to say that I really appreciate what the Lord has done for my life. Yeah. Elaine, have you received the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes. Is it your desire to be baptized this morning? Yes. Therefore, upon the confession of your faith, I now baptize you in the name of the Father the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Father, we thank you that you said your word will not return to you void. We thank you for your living word that we here at Rome are able to experience that you can bring the prodigal home. As you brought the prodigal son home, you can bring the prodigal daughter home. Oh, Father, thank you for ransoming. Thank you for giving us Elaine's soul and ransoming her back to us. You are truly the Redeemer. And Lord, today we are allow, announcing that the redeemed of the Lord will say so. And so, Father, for that, we give you praise. Would you go before Elaine? Father, the journey is so long, and the days are dark. But you, Savior of the world, you, the light of the world, I pray that you continue to shine your light upon her, O oh God. Father, heal and touch her. Heal her brokenness. And, O oh God, as she walks away out of this water this morning, I pray that you, she would leave up behind all her grave clothes. And that you make all things new, even in our life. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. I just want to say that it's been a long time in the making that I needed to make this step. And I've been fighting it. Yes. And I believe that, you know, last year I wanted to do this. Yes. And last year it was my birthday and it was done on my birthday and I never came to church that day. And I should have done it that day. And I regret it every day that I did not do it. Mm. So I'm here today and I, for some reason, I came extra early to church. And if anybody knows me, I don't really come. <laughs> I come a little late all the time. Mm. But for some reason this morning, I came extremely early and very in a, in a very good mood. Mm. So I know today is the day that hey. I have to give my life to God. Mm. My grandmother set many good trends and I need to make sure that I follow and that I continue to set the trends for my children so that they can come up and be the up and coming disciples for Christ. So 
I need to make this move so that they can see it and witness it for themselves and know what they need to follow. So. It is true what Sasha just said that she keep putting this away, keeping it, postponing it, putting it off. And every time there's baptism service and call, she goes hiding. And like she said this morning, she just came extra early hour. Because God had a destiny moment for her. This is your divine appointment, Sasha. This is the day the Lord has made for you. And we certainly rejoice with you. Sasha, have you given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ? Yes, I have. Is it your desire to be baptized this morning? Yes, it is. I still have to ask. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It definitely is. Therefore, upon the confession of your faith, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Oh! Hallelujah! I see the aunt. I see the aunt there. She's beaming with joy. You, you don't know how much she's been praying for Sasha and the rest of our nieces to come and, and nephews too to do this. And to God be the glory. Let me pray with you before you go. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you for Sasha today. Father, would you please be with her as she steps out of this water. Father, we know the enemy would come after her. But Lord, we know that there's victory in your name. And there's power in your name. Father, the power to break every chain and every stronghold. And so, Father, as she leaves this place, oh God, Lord, may your Holy Spirit continue to guide her and lead her to greater and newer heights. For we ask this in Jesus' most precious name. Amen. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they came to the tomb, bringing the spices which they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. The tomb. But when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. Suddenly, two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Where is your
I'm going to be getting you to do the what uh, yeah choir can go back see 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 people are wondering why we get so excited at Easter sorry excuse me we don't believe in Easter eggs and we don't believe in Easter Bunny but this morning, the reason why we're excited is because we want to show the whole world and we want to tell the whole world that we serve a risen Savior who is still, I said, who is alive. 
I still work today, today. I'm going to get us to do something that we, we, we will do on a day like this. I need you to help me show the world that we serve a risen Savior. Because you're going to be hearing the message quickly this morning, how some people are arguing with you that God is dead. But before we go into the message, I just want them to know that I got some happy people in here. I got some blessed folk in here. I got some redeemed folk in here. I got some heaven-bound people in here. Because we know he lives. We too shall live. So, so, so I want you to help me show the world because we got people watching us on YouTube in the Philippines, in Nigeria, in, in, in Trinidad, in, in Tobago, Jamaica. Yeah, we got folks in Jamaica watching. And they need to know that we serve a risen Savior. And it's in the world today. I don't care what man say. It's called, put it up, my traditional happy wave. Easter happy wave. And it goes like this. You all remember Christmas Easter happy wave? Mm. It, it goes like this. I need you folk on this left hand side to begin this Christ is risen happy wave. You're going to get up and you're going to shout it out. So the folk at Eglinton Square can hear you. And you're going to go up and you go, Christ is risen and you make a wave, a big wave. Christ is risen, you make a big wave, and then you sit. And then I need you folk on the center aisle to respond back to them and let them know that he is risen indeed. So you're going to get up and you go, he's risen indeed. You make your happy wave and you sit. And you folk here, because we don't want to leave you out of the fun. We're going to get you to start the happy wave again. And you're going to shout it out like with everything you've got. Shake everything your mama gave you. And go, Christ is risen. And make your happy wave and sit. You folk here in the middle. You're going to be doing double duty. You should know by now, you should know by now that you shouldn't be sitting in the center aisle on Easter Sunday. It's your punishment. You're going to, you're going to respond back to them and you're going to go, is risen indeed. Does everybody know what you're supposed to do? Okay, okay. If your neighbor look confused and they don't know when to make the wave, just, just tell your neighbor, just, just look at me, look at me, do what I do for this moment. Church, let us let the world know that we're blessed people, we're redeemed people. I said we're heaven-bound people, we're destiny people. And let them know that it doesn't matter what they say. What we know is, he is risen, and he is risen indeed. And that's why I'm happy today. That's why I'm blessed today. That's why I can say I'm redeemed today. And that's why I can say I'm heaven bound today. Church, are you ready? Okay. At the count of three, this side here, don't, don't, don't disappoint now, don't disappoint. At the count of three, one, two, Three!
For a moment there, I thought I was at a Raptors game. What a wave! That's for our Jesus. I, I know some of you, I know some of you. I've seen you at the Maple Leafs game. Even though they're losing badly, you're still making a wave for a losing team. But here we are, and a winning team. With the most winnest, all-star of all-star, King Jesus. Leading on the charge. A few moments. I want to talk to you this morning on the subject empty promises. Empty promises. Ask the person next to you empty promises. I see some of you, when I ask you to tell your neighbor empty promises, I see some of you, you were rubbing that in good, as if you've been waiting to say that for the longest time. Have you ever been found? Have you ever been found on the end of an empty promise? You know someone said they would do something, but in the end, they didn't live up to their promises. Anybody? Like this little girl. No, 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 no little girl. But like this girl here on the, on the screen. Put it up. Like this girl here on the screen. I told him I wanted to walk down the aisle. He sent me grocery shopping. <laughs> come, come, come on. Come on. Come on. Where, where are my men in this house? Where are my brothers in this house? I can't hear you. Where are my brothers in this house? That's bad. If a brother promises, if a brother promises a woman a ringi, a ringi is what she's expecting, not a dinghy. Don't you hate empty promises? I'm sure there are ladies here. You've watched the TV shows, and you've watched TV advertisements. Don't it up. And you've watched TV advertisements. Tells that you can be hot and sexy if you can buy these diet pills for $59.95. And if you buy it today, you get a bottle free. Plus, they will send one to your friend. And this pill does something inside your body and the fat just melts off and you don't have to change one thing about your eating habit only for 59.95 and they sell millions of those pills million dollar worth of those pills and we're still not shrinking Hello, somebody. Empty promises. And some of you men who are growing bald, or some of us who are losing our hairline. We, 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 we've been promised miracle growth too, only to be taken in. I won't tell you what I use. <laughs> Politician tells us during election time, read my lips. I won't raise any taxes when you elect me. And we're still reading their lips. No doubt, my brothers and my sisters, what I'm trying to say to you is we live in a world full of empty promises. It used to be a man and a woman would make vows and promises to each other for better or for worse, for richer or poorer, in sickness or in health, till death do us part. Not anymore. Now 
it's no longer till death, death, D-E-A-T-H, do us part. It's now till death, D-E-B-T, do us part. <laughs> Am I speaking the honest truth here? And so because of all the empty promises all around us, we become skeptical and leery of anything or anyone that tells us we can have something for nothing. You know what I'm talking about. If it sounds too good to be true, it probably, help me finish it. But somebody here this morning, I came to tell you on this resurrection morning that God is not a man that he should lie, not the son of man, that he should change his mind. Because what God says he will do, he has done. And what God has done is what God has said. Do I have some witnesses in this place who knows that all the promises of God in Christ Jesus are yes and amen? Oh, oh, I'm gonna preach, I'm gonna preach this message of blessed assurance to you this morning. I know I don't have much time, but because but, but, somebody here who has been jinxed, somebody here who has been duped and dumped, I want you to know that, 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 put the light point up, put the light point up. If that's all you get this morning, I want you to know this, that, that instead of the promises full of emptiness that the world gives, what God has given you on this Easter morning is emptiness that are full of promises. Oh, 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 you missed that, you missed that, you missed that, you missed that. Oh, that is so good. I'm, I'm going to tweet that to myself. Let, 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 me, let, me, let, me, let me say that again. Let me say that again. Let me say that again. I say instead of promises full of emptiness, on Easter, God gave us emptiness that is full of promises. Oh, aren't you glad you serve a God that cannot lie? A God who, to him, if it's too good to be true, it is true. For the remainder of our time, let me quickly share with you two. If I have time, I'll share the two. If not, I'll share the one. And then you can do whatever you want. Let me share with you two of God's promises that are two, two of God's emptiness. Two of God's emptiness that are full of promises. Two of them. And 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 there are two of them, and each promise is marked by something empty. Are you ready to receive? T tell your neighbor, ready or not, the pastor is going to give it to you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Number one, number one, the empty tomb. In the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 28, verse 1, Matthew tells us that Mary Magdalene and the other women went early on that first Sunday morning to the tomb where Jesus was laid. By the way, put it, put it up. By the way, Matthew 28, verse 1. By the way, have you ever asked yourself, Where were all the men? I ask your neighbor, where were all the men? T tell another neighbor they were hiding. Oh, I won't even go there. I won't even go there. Church, Matthew tells us that on that fateful Sunday morning, these women came expecting to find Jesus' buried body still in the tomb. They came back to do what they couldn't do on Friday because it was a day of preparation 
And Saturday was the Sabbath where you don't do nothing. So they came back to pay their last respect to a dead Jesus. And when they saw the stone rolled away, the Bible said they became terrified. Verse 5. And the angel of the Lord answered and said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you're looking for Jesus. Dead Jesus, who has been crucified. Verse 6. And the angel said, He is not here. For he has risen. Just as he said. Oh, you missed that. I said, aren't you glad you serve a God who whatever he says, he does. Underline that word in your Bible. If you don't get any much that we do today because of time, just as he said. Oh, good God of heaven. Good God of heaven. That is why we've been shouting today that Christ is risen and he's risen indeed because he has risen just as he said. Ooh, I, I feel like getting excited all by my setup up here. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. The tomb empty? See, that's the problem with us. Because the world tells us if it is too good to be true, it probably is. So we read a passage like this and we yawn. Ah, just as he said. Ah. And how many of you know that familiarity can breed contempt? Because we're so used to this Easter story that is just Easter story. Do you know what the chief priest and the Pharisees did to secure Jesus' tomb so he wouldn't have any chance of getting out? In the previous chapter, put it up, chapter 27, Matthew tells us in verse 66 that they went and made the grave secure. I, won't even I don't even have time to tell you what that is. Because you see me, I put it in red. And along with a guard, we know what a guard is. They set a seal. On the stone. Meaning, they add triple threat security. Good God of heaven. If they had ADT or Tycho, they would have used that too. They would have used that because their life depended on that man called Jesus staying in the tomb. Because if you got out of that tomb, all hell might break loose. So let's keep him in there. Oh, but let me stop and ask somebody here this morning. Why do you need a big boulder for a dead man? <laughs> Why do you need them guards to keep a dead preacher from getting out? I'll tell you why. Because somebody as smart as the chief priests and the Pharisees had figured out that this one miracle worker <laughs> has enough power <laughs> And potential to step out of that tomb at any moment so we better secure the tomb with the highest level of security we can get but the devil is a liar I said Jesus is still the Messiah can I preach this message this morning like like I know I feel it see some of the adversities you've been facing lately it's not God saying, I've left you. It's not God saying to you, 
Caroline, sorry. I jinxed you. Oh no. It's the devil. I said it's the devil. And your haters saying, if she gets out of this mess, if he gets his life back together again, we will never be able to control her. I will never be able to handle him. But the devil is a liar. I want you to I find the somebody I find somebody next to you and tell them, don't quit till you win. Don't quit till you win. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Don't stop. Don't stop till you come out. Don't stop till you come out. Don't stop till you resurrect. Don't stop till you come out over to the other side in Jesus' name. Somebody shout yes. Shout yes. Because I came to serve a notice to your enemy this morning. God knows when I woke up at 5 o'clock this morning. He gave me a word for somebody here this morning. Because I came to serve a notice to your enemy. And I'm glad you all came back on Sunday hey, to hear the conclusion of Friday. To hear how it all went down. Amen. On that good Friday, Sister Isley, while Jesus laid on the very tomb, the devil and the demons were planning their victory parade. And the headlines on Jerusalem CNN... <laughs> The breaking news of the day was Jesus defeated. <laughs> and sadness and gloom filled the hearts of his disciples. It looked like they had been taken in by Jesus. Like all the false prophets before him. It looked like, like, like promises full of emptiness. For three days, Three days, it looked like they were serving a liar. Meanwhile, the devil and his demons were having a hell of a party. Oh Lord, help me preach this message. But before Satan and his cronies could bring out their victory cake, before all the witches and the warlocks could break out into their breakdance. Hey, the Bible says, up from the grave he arose with a mighty triumph for his foes. He arose a victor from the dark domain and he lives forever with the saints to reign. He arose. Oh! Excuse me, pardon me. I didn't mean to get you all wound up yet. I know you're, all of you here, you're not one of them chosen frozen Baptist. But Dick Neal, did you know with all the proof that in the eating of the pudding, some have argued that the tomb wasn't really empty, but the reason it seemed empty was because the women went to the wrong tomb. Now, now, church, help your boy out. Which gender, when lost, has too much pride and stubbornness to stop and ask for directions? Men or women? Why you are men quiet? You already hearing the ladies talk? You can't talk. You see? Women ask, right? That's just the way it is. If there had been men in that group of women that came to the tomb that Sunday, Dickie Neal, he would have said, nah, I don't need a GPS. I know where the tomb is. I don't need to ask. But women will stop to ask 
if they are lost. That's just the woman nature. A man could be so lost driving toward an ocean and he will say, I still know where I'm going. <laughs> But the point, the point I want you to see here is this is not a Pine Hill Cemetery or a Rest Avon Memorial Gardens where Jesus could have been buried in one of thousands of tombs that these women might have been mixed up. Which was the right tomb? Jesus was buried in a well-known private tomb belonging to Joseph of Arimathea. Oh, let me tell you something else. And it was the only tomb that was guarded. <laughs> how, how can you miss that? If the RCMP are standing in front of your house, even the neighbors will know something is going on. They were there already on that Friday when he was buried. They were watching from the distance. So this couldn't have been a mixed up. If there was a mix up, somebody could have easily, Mr. Bolan, listen to me. This is very good. That's why I ask you to interact with your scripture. If there was a mix up, somebody could have easily gone to the correct grave and said, here is the body, case closed. Would you say? But that's not what happened. Church, what happened was as the angel said in verse 6, He is not here, for He has risen just as He is. That ought to make somebody here this morning happy, happy, because what that means is when Christ came out of that tomb, it meant death was finished. It meant death has been defeated for good. That the grave has no more power over you. Why? 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 Because put the lifeline up. Put the lifeline up. I'll tell you why. Put the lifeline up. Here's the lifeline. Why? Because the promise of the empty tomb is that we will also someday be raised from the dead. Ah, and because he lives, because he lives, I too, you too, shall live again in Jesus' name. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, what did you say in John chapter 11, verse 25? What did you say, Jesus? He said, I am the resurrection and the life. And he who believes in me will live even, even if he dies. Oh, hello, somebody. So, 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 that means for you and for me, when, when death comes to take us out, he will come to take us out someday. Except the Lord Jesus should split the eastern clouds and the clouds be rolled up like a scroll. The Bible said it's appointed for man to die once. That means when death comes to take you out, for you, the grave is not the end. Death for you is only a change of location. Hello, somebody. I, I, I still have a moment. I, I love the story of a florist. I love the story of a florist who had a mix up of orders on one very busy day. A new business, Dennis, was up opening, and a family also had a funeral. So both the business and the bereaved family had ordered flowers from the florist, but the bouquets got mixed up. The guy with the new business just walked into that florist store, and he was livid. He was ticked off, and, and he said to the florist, he said to the florist, the flowers that were delivered to my opening day ceremony said, rest in peace. And the florist mused for a moment and replied, you think you have problems. You should have seen the people who just left here. 
They had a funeral and they got a bouquet that said, good luck in your new location. <laughs> come, come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. All, all I'm telling you is, for you, Christian brother, there's no mixed up. <laughs> for you, Christian sister, that is just a change of location. Because the promise of the empty tomb is that we also someday will be raised from the dead and we will never die the same death the way people who don't know Jesus die. So cheer up! Jesus has conquered the grave for you and me. Oh, wait, but there's more. Is David here this morning? Oh, he's not here. I need the radio voice. Wait, but wait, there is more. <laughs> Why was the tomb empty? The tomb was empty, brother Paul, because Jesus was alive. The angel said, he's not here, for he has risen just as he said. And the promise of the emptiness of the tomb at Easter to you and to me is, we too shall live in heaven with Christ, even if we die. That's the first promise. But there's, but, 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 but there's a second that is just as dramatic as the first. That's why I love the word of God. The Bible says, let in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let a matter be confirmed. So we have, we have the, 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 the promise of the empty tomb. But here's the second one. I'm just going to give that to you and then I'll dismiss you. Here's the second emptiness of Easter that was full of promise. Number two. Full of promise. Number two. Put it up. The empty burial clothes. The empty burial clothes. Oh, this is good. So after the angel spoke to the women, John, the beloved disciple, told us in John chapter 20 that the women immediately went to where the, the, the disciples were hiding. And they went and reported the incredible news to the disciples. Verse 3. Peter and John, that's John, other disciple, took off, raced to the tomb to see for themselves. Oh, that's good. I got to stop and talk to you about some skeptics in your life. Mm, some skeptics. See, see, there are people who can, who can argue with you. They can argue with you till, till you turn blue or till they turn red. And they still won't believe what Jesus has done in your life. Because number one, for them, seeing is believing. And then number two, They've never experienced Jesus the way you've experienced him. Amen. And unless they do so, you will only be casting your pearls to the swine. I, I didn't call you pig. You, 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 but you know what I'm saying. Isn't it true for those of us who have tasted and see that the Lord is good? Isn't it true that there's a deeper reality that we believe that Jesus can step into any dead situation in our life and make our bitterness sweet again. Can I get a witness in this place? But that's why you, that's why when your naysayers look at you and they're trying to figure out how the heck you survived that bitter divorce, how in the world did you lose all that you lost and you didn't end up in a crazy house and you're still here in the church praising the Lord? That's why you got to look at them in the eye and say, you serve a risen Savior and he's in the world today. I know that he's living. Whatever man may say, I see his hand of mercy. I hear his voice of cheer and just the time I need him. Hey, he's always here. He leaves, he leaves salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he leaves. He leaves within my heart. Oh, oh, somebody here, you tell them 
you have had an experience like these women in the tomb. Several years ago, I might close with this. Several years ago, there was a movement at the University of Chicago called the God is Dead movement. And the God is Dead movement, basically their premise is there's no God. That God is just a make-believe. And they will sit in the conference for hours philosophizing about how there's no God. And so, there was one brother, let me open it. There was one brother who came from the south side of Chicago. And he decided to go check this conference out. This dead, is God is dead conference on the campus. And he wanted to go to listen to them talk about philosophically and theologically and all the callies of, of, of how God is dead. He didn't have no PhDs or nothing, nothing like that. He was just a believer. He just came to hear how they would argue that God is dead and that there's no God. So, they began to give their philosophical and theological and esoterical and astrological and all the calls arguments that God is dead. And this brother got up from his seat with an apple in his hand and he decided to ask those big wigs a certain question. Don't forget he had no PhD. But these PhDs were not by any means intimidated about him standing up. After all, this guy is not even known in the academia. He's just a, 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 who is this ignoramus to ask us questions. So the brother just got up with the hand, apple in his hand. And he was doing, and he began to ask them questions. You said God is dead. You said God is a myth. You said resurrection is a make believe. You've been saying for the last. Forty-five minutes. I've been listening to you. <laughs> Talk about how God is not real. <coughs> and he took the apple and threw it away. <laughs> and one PhD stood up and said, Sir, do you have a question or not? And the man said, with a smile on his face, as a matter of fact, I do. Can you please tell me, was the apple I ate sweet or not? And the PhD philosopher said back to him, how can I know if it's sweet if I haven't tasted it? <laughs> and that brother with a blessed assurance in his face replied, and how can you know too if my Jesus is sweet if you've never tasted my Jesus. Stand up on your feet. Stand up on your feet. 
Stand up on your feet. I wish I had time. But you have to come back on Wednesday night. Because I haven't told you yet what the empty burial clothes means to you. But I brought me a napkin here this morning. Oh, I wish I had time. I wish I had time. Would you come back on Wednesday? Oh! The second point is so powerful that if I had time to share with you, oh, I wish I had 10 minutes. But I know your turkey is waiting for you. And I don't want your turkey to get mad at me. You sure? You sure? Are you sure? Yes. Can you give me five more minutes? Yes. Okay, sit, 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 sit. Oh, I love this church already. I love this church already. I'll do this quickly. I'll do this quickly. Thank you. I will take your honor. I'll take it. Give me, give me, give me, give me John chapter 20 verse 3 quickly. No, we're there. The text says, Peter and John ran quickly to the tomb. Why? To go check it out themselves. Because it's not enough to believe in what grandmama said. I thank God for grandpapa's faith. But you got to taste and see for yourself that Jesus is good. So, so they came verse 6. I'm going to make this quick. They came verse 6. Give me verse 6. So, so you're making me do this so you won't come on Wednesday, right? All right. I know you. I know you. I know you. Okay, I'll do it. I'll do it. So, so, so they came in verse 6. Watch this, they came in verse 6. And so Simon Peter also came following him. And he entered the tomb. So, so. They found out that the tomb was empty, all right. But they also found another miracle. Another miracle. Because let a matter be established in the mouth of two or three witnesses. Is that something else? Not just the empty tomb. The text says he saw the linen wrappings lying there. Whew. Lying there meaning it was empty. There was no body in it. No body in it. It was like an empty shell of a butterfly that has shed its cocoon and flew away. Verse 7. Verse 7, and the face cloth which had been on his head was lined with the linens, but was rolled up neatly, neatly, rolled up in a place by itself. Good God of heaven. Who did the laundry and folded the clothes? I asked somebody you haven't talked to yet, who did the laundry? Who got up and did the laundry? Who got up and did the laundry? Not mama. And I know papa don't do laundries. But somebody holler Jesus did. Jesus did. Oh. What I want, I, I, like I don't have time, but let me ask you this. I have time to ask you this. If somebody had stolen Jesus' body, as some wants us to believe, why would they want to steal his body naked? <laughs> oh, talk to me now. And if they had stolen, if they had stolen his body, since when did a thief have time to neatly fold your laundry for you? <laughs> have you ever had a break-in in your house? And the Thief neatly arranged your house for you the way he found it. <laughs> oh, I'm going to clean up Dickie Neal's house and, 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 and so, so he wouldn't know I visited in your dreams. No, no. Thieves don't do your laundry for you. What thieves do is they clean you out. Can I get a witness? <laughs> but somebody here instead wore the empty grave clothes. Of Easter tells me is since the cross 
couldn't nail Jesus down. And since the tomb couldn't hold him down, the burial clothes won't be necessary too because Jesus is alive! Hey! I got three more minutes. I got three more minutes. I have a napkin here. It says, and the folded linen was in place. Ah, ah. The implication is it was neatly put away. Now, now, we don't, we don't understand the significance of the folded napkin unless we are Jews. A any Jewish person in here? Oh, we're all Gentiles. Tell your neighbor, hello, Gentile. <laughs> all right, we're all Gentiles. Okay, watch this, watch this. There's a little Jewish custom in play here. The folded napkin had to do with the master teacher etiquette. The servant will set the table for his master, and the servant will wait on the side until the master had finished eating. Now, if the master was done eating, he will wipe his mouth, wipe his beard, wipe his finger, and then he will wipe up the napkin and just throw it on the, on the side. And the servant would take that as a sign that the master was finished eating. So it's time to clear the table. He waited up. I'm done. Gentlemen, you know how you toss your clothes on the bedroom floor when you're done with it? And you wait for your <coughs> to pick it up for you? Uh, maybe I'm speaking for myself. Maybe I'm speaking for myself. But if the master was done... If the master was done, if the master got up from the table and folded the napkin neatly, not weighed up, fold it neatly. And place it beside his plate. The servant knew right away that the folded napkin meant, I'm coming back. Excuse me, pardon me, forgive me. I know Baptist ministers are not supposed to shout in church. We're supposed to be proper and still like a frozen turkey my wife bought for Easter. But this Baptist minister is not about to keep silent. This Baptist pastor is not a chosen frozen because how am I going to keep quiet when for me, he died, and for me, he lives an everlasting life and light. He freed. Oh, that's why death can't hold you down. Put a lifeline on, and then we're gonna we're done. The empty grave clothes gives me. The promise that I will come back again with my Jesus. Just as this folded napkin means that the master was coming back. And if he's coming back, I too will come back. Because if he's up, that means I'll be up. Just look at your neighbor one more time and say, I'll be back. Stand up on your feet. That we serve a risen Savior who is in our heart today. We're blessed people, we're redeemed people, and we are heaven bound people. And that is why we're happy the way we are this morning. And above all, we heard the message this morning about the empty promises that instead of the promises full of emptiness that the world gives, what God has given you on Easter is emptiness that is full of promises. Ooh, that is good emptiness that is full of promises and we looked at those two empty promises that are full of promises this morning and the first one is the empty tomb and we know that because Christ lives 
we too shall live. And the second empty promise, full of promises, is the empty burial clothes of Jesus. Hey, he didn't need it anymore. And in the mighty name of Jesus, this morning, I decree and declare it over you that you would not need that grave clothes again. That you whom God has set free will be free indeed. This morning is your day of casting out and letting go of that grave clothes. You don't need it anymore, just as Jesus didn't need this. Why don't I pray with you this morning that that same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead will quicken your mortal body and will give you a resurrected life. As you heard testimonies of people who got baptized this morning of a changed life and a life that has been reborn again. Yours can be that too because God is no respecter of man. What he did for one, he will do for another. And you saw the many people who came forward to get prayed over. And I just want to do that with you right now. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray for that man or woman who is watching this broadcast that today, this resurrection morning, that they will receive their resurrection power to God. That whatever the enemy has declared dead in their lives, Father, you bring it to life again. That same power will believe that raised Jesus Christ from the dead is still at work in us today. So Father, do that and let that person praise you. And Father, let us praise you again and let them too tell your testimony and tell their story of your saving grace. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Amen. I trust you receive that message. If you do, why don't you comment at the bottom of your screen. Let us know how much you've been blessed by this wonderful service. Christ is risen. is risen indeed. And he wants to live again anew in your life as he is in ours. But you got to taste him and see for yourself that God is good. Hey, if you don't have a church, why don't you join us here? At Wilma Heights Baptist Church, we're on 1687 Victoria Park, south of Lawrence. And we will bless you. And you'll find loving people. And you'll find caring people. And above all, we're a worshiping church. So long. God bless you. Happy Easter. We love you. And we'll see you again.